Eco Chai exclusively represents specialty Taiwan tea with over 25 years of immersion in the Taiwanese tea industry and culture. And today we are here tasting our newly arrived spring batch of Tie Guan Yin Oolong from Mu Jia in the Taipei area of northern Taiwan. Mu Jia is the historical uh, region of producing a traditional style of Tie Guan Yin that stands in stark contrast to the Tie Guan Yin that is, uh, at least these days, uh, what is produced in mainland China. Mainland Chinese Tie Guan Yins are lightly oxidized and unroasted and the Mu Jia, traditional Tie Guan Yin from Mu Jia, Taipei, is a medium to heavily oxidized tea and heavily roasted. Uh, these leaves were roasted five times and uh, brought up to a temperature of about 120 degrees at the end, uh, which is relatively high. Um, and, well, we think that this spring's uh, batch of Tie Guan Yin is particularly representative of this traditional tea making style. Uh, the unique thing about Tie Guan Yin tea making is that the leaves, when they are being, after they are heavily oxidized and go through a traditional style of um, oolong tea making, when they're being rolled and dried, they're tightly wrapped in cloth into balls, and uh, that's how the tea is rolled. But during that, in the middle of that process, they put the wrapped tea leaves into a, um, a basket-style warmer, really. It's not a roaster. Uh, and lightly steam the leaves, in effect, at about 70 degrees Celsius. Um, and this creates a, a slight sour quality in the flavor profile of the tea, which is what uh, puts Tie Guan Yin in its own category in terms of flavor profile at least. So you get this heavily oxidized uh, tea that goes through a particular um, step that is unique to Tie Guan Yin, which is this light steaming per se, or at least just um, held at a temperature during the rolling process. So it's a kind of uh, fermented quality in the flavor of Tie Guan Yin. And then the leaves are roasted extensively, as we said. And our friend who made this tea, uh, he put the leaves through a, uh, a machine that allows the stems to be trimmed from the leaves in order to get a uniformity in the, um, in the constituents of the leaf. Basically, when you remove the stems and you have mostly leaf matter, it makes it much easier and uh, produces the optimal effects when you're roasting it because the, the, the consistency of the leaf matter is similar. When you have stems, the stems are much more stubborn and it doesn't allow you to roast it as uniformly. So, uh, in, these leaves were uh, prepared for competition, you could say, um, but they were roasted beyond the standard of quality for competition, at least these days. Our friend believes that the competition standard um, is what it is, and he has his own standard, which he believes is more representative of a traditional Tie Guan Yin Oolong. Um, by the way, I measured 9 grams of tea for a 150 milliliter pot here, and I'm loosely brewing it for one minute as I'm uh, talking away. But uh, that's a little less than our um, standard recommendation of a 1 to 15 ratio of leaf to water. Um, these leaves, given that they have no stems virtually, and they're heavily roasted, they brew strongly. And this tea, by nature, is, has a very strong character. It's rich, and it's dark, and it's a little bit smoky, and very complex. Uh, and if you brew it too strong, you can brew it strongly and just get a full-on power effect, but some of the subtleties and the complexity in the uh, flavor profile are lost. So it's nice to try to gauge and start out light. You can even start out less than nine grams per 150, uh, maybe seven or eight, and then work your way up uh, slowly from there and see how the flavor profile changes with that difference in concentration.
have a sip here. Every time I drink Tiaguanin, I just think of how unique its character is in comparison to all other oolongs and tea, all other tea types beyond that. It's, uh, it reminds me something like blackberries or uh, currants, kind of a, a, a rich fruity flavor with tang. It definitely has that tang too, like blackberries do there very sweet, but they're also very tangy. Um, so it has that kind of wild berry character to it. And then it's also combined with smokiness from the heavily roasted factor. And this batch, I feel, uh, we've been sourcing from the same tea maker for several years now. And I feel that he's really struck a nice balance of roast and that fruity, uh, sour quality right off the bat. It often takes his teas, a year before, in my personal opinion, they really shine. They, the roast mellows out and it's just much more balanced and um, rounded in its flavor profile. But this year he seems to be able, he seems to have been able to do that uh, right away. Um, so it just has this uh, really nice, full-bodied, very well-rounded character that combines this sour fruity quality with a deep roasted quality. Every time I taste it, I'm like, I don't know what this tastes like. <laughs> it's so interesting and so unique. The first thing that came to mind just now with that sip was a slightly underripe peach. So it's very, uh, it has that fruity bouquet, uh, but there's something tart. The, the, the tart factor just brings you to a slightly less than ripe fruit. I think stone fruit is a proper um, term that could be used in describing this flavor. But as soon as I say one kind of fruit, there's just so much else going on there with the roasted quality that it's, it just feels insufficient immediately. The mouthfeel is really nice. There's a very smooth uh, texture to this tea. How someone has learned to roast tea for, I don't know, 40 or 50 hours and over five roasting periods to just to, to achieve this kind of um, complex flavor profile with a lot of balance and so much depth. It really just has so much more substance than almost any other kind of tea uh, that I've experienced personally. Um, this tea maker combines two types of tea leaves uh, to create a, a particular balance. It's another aspect of his whole recipe. Mo this year, he said that this uh, combination is mostly the Tiaguanyin oolong strain of tea plant. Uh, so he uses Tiaguanyin strain, which is a proper traditional strain from mainland China that has been here for well over 100 years. Um, and in combination with Jinxuan or Tai Cha number 12. Uh, and in the past, uh, we, when we've asked him, he said it's about 50-50, but I guess this year it's something like 75-25. And perhaps that's one of the reasons that the, the fruity uh, tart character is more pronounced right off the bat and uh, immediately balanced in relation to the roast factor. Uh, the other previous batches, like I said, have taken a year or so before they really reach that ideal composition. You can brew this tea, it goes a long way. Uh, I stopped at six brews and it was slightly less. The, it got a little bit thinner, but it was still very complex in its flavor profile. We encourage you to do what I'm doing now, which is to pour off, uh, I'm pouring uh, whatever you're using, if, whatever excess you have from each brew, pour it off into a cup so that you have a cooled down version or just leave a cup uh, to set to cool. The point being that the flavor profile does, it offers a whole different experience of the tea once the temperature uh, decreases. 
when the when the tea is hot you get more of an aromatic profile uh, more of the high notes so to speak or a little bit more complexity but when it cools down the body just fills out and especially the texture and it just has a, a richer quality to it there's enough sweetness here now I'm just thinking of like orange marmalade or something, a, a kind of fruit preserve. Um, maybe the fruits were dried and smoked before they were made into preserves. I don't know. There's just so much going on. We, if you like a hearty character of tea, uh, we think that you would really appreciate this one, particularly this year's spring batch. We only procure a very small amount uh, from this award-winning tea maker. He's uh, taken competitions more seriously in recent years. And this year, we, when we visited him, he had his awards on a wall, and it was, the wall was full. I mean, there were like at least 10 top-ranking awards uh, from recent years in the competition. But having said that, when he gave us a sample of an award-winning tea last year, we didn't think it matched what he determines to be a more traditional uh, Tiaguanyin flavor profile. So we're really happy that he goes beyond the competition, so to speak, to produce something that he thinks represents the culture that he grew up in. And that's what we were able to offer. Um, so we get very small quantities, uh, once in the spring and once in the winter. And that's what we have to share for our traditionally made Tia Guanyin Oolong from Mu Jia, Taipei, Taiwan. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, hit like and share this video with anyone who you think might be interested in uh, the information we share. And if you haven't already, please sign up for our newsletter to receive all news about new arrivals of tea and many stories about tea culture and the tea industry here in Taiwan. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you next time.